Alrighty, welcome to another Vintage Cube team draft. We've got myself, Abram MTG, and Luis Salvato, a solid squad if I've ever seen one, facing off against uh, one of uh, my high school alumni, Tom Martell. He's actually uh, went to the same high school, as I've mentioned before, Bishop O'Dowd in Oakland. Sandy Dog and Alpha Frog, so it's the usuals, uh, you, the regulars in this Cube Draft server, and a uh, pretty mediocre pack, unfortunately, to kick things off. If you've watched a good amount of these, you'll probably know that Flooded Strand is likely the card I'm going to take. I, I just value the fetches really highly, and this is a low power level pack. The other good cards are Baleful Strix, Snapcaster Mage, Loris, Batter Skull, Volcanic, Rafine's Tower, you know, it's just stuff. In fact, I'll probably get one of those cards back. Maybe someone will take Bolsa Citadel. But I'm happy enough taking a fetch land, passing to Martel here. Second pick, we've got Vamp. Vamp's okay. We've got Reprieve. I do like that one. Elite Spellbinder and Recruiter of the Guard. So three pretty good white cards. Who's passing me? Alpha Frog's passing to me. Frog does like... Does like the mid-range black decks, but Frog also has tons of range. And in fact, one of the cool things as we've seen the evolution of this cube draft discord kind of continue, because the draft cadence has really picked up over the summer, is I think all of us are just getting better at cubing. Uh, myself included. Like, you always have something to learn, and everyone's range is increasing as people have to adapt to all the cube drafts and the iterative process of drafting with kind of like this group of 20 to 25 people who routinely draft here. In any case, I think as much as I like Vamp when you have broken stuff, I didn't really start with a broken card. I think I might just take Reprieve. It's just a really good card. It fits into a lot of decks. I wouldn't mind going white here. Sandy Dog is downstream. Not that that's the biggest deal. There's just not much there to choose from. Uh, I'll probably just take Marsh Flats now and set up for a nice Esper deck. And... What am I passing? I'm passing a Force of Negation as the card Tom's probably going to take. And a, there's also a Flicker Wisp. There's also Prime Time and Oath of Druids. But when Ely Cassis isn't in the draft, Oath of Druids is going to come back around. That's his, like his favorite card. Uh, I'm just going to take the Marsh Flats, I think. I, I don't know that I'm going to play blue, though I probably will. Especially passing to Tom, who likes blue decks. Uh, I'll probably want to end up cutting him. But I think Marsh Flats is just such a flexible card plus having marsh flats and flooded strand they're esper fetches so it actually matters i think it's better to have marsh flats plus flooded strand than say flooded strand plus wooded foothills because now i even if i don't pick up a lot of duels i could draft a nice uh, kind of like esper colored deck though I, I also do plan on picking up duels next up we have miscalculation grief and that's about it i mean winds of abandon is a good card it's better if you're aggressive it, it's not as good in a defensive deck. Cryptic's good, a little harder to cast. I'm not sure between Miscalc and Grief here. I haven't passed a great black card. I guess I did pass Vamp. Tom could easily have taken Vamp. And there's Baleful Strix. But Miscalc is pretty solid. I think the high end of Grief is higher, so let's just take Grief. If we get like an Ephemerate or something, we could definitely do some, some good stuff. Um... Uh, Next up, there's Watery Grave, but I don't think I'm in for that. There's Teferi, but honestly, Teferi is good. It's probably the th card I'd take third in this pack after Watery Grave and Vindicate. Maybe Ragrin Triumph, but I am going to take the Vindicate. First of all, I have a white card and a black card and a white black land, so Vindicate fits perfectly. But also, Vindicate's just a cheap answer to anything, and on the play, just Vindicating their land is awesome. Plus, black cards to pitch to grief is good, and it works with the resource denial theme that grief kind of lends itself to. What's going to come back here? I want those four cards. Someone might take Fire Blast or Dire Fleet Daredevil. Yeah, I might get a Wrath of God back. Maybe a Dark Depths. We'll see. So this is my last new pack of new cards. Oh, I, I have set myself up pretty nicely to take Brainstorm here with two fetches, so I think I'll probably just do that. I do like Wasteland, and I have passed a bunch of good white this direction. There's Esper Sentinel, Archangel Avacyn, and Monastery Mentor here. But I think when you have two fetches, Brainstorm becomes a really strong card. Also, Mesmeric Fiend is fine. I don't really take the Exarch Twin cards that often. I, I think it's viable to draft them. I think the way you're supposed to draft them is kind of the way they're going to go in this draft, which is 
Abram or Salvato is going to get the Exarch with like five cards left in the pack, and I think that'll be fine. All right, can I wheel that Snapcaster Mage? Probably not. I would also take Baleful Strix, because I'm going to get one of those cards back. Oh, Baleful Strix? Nice. I am real happy with that one. Also, now I'm really set up for Ephemerate. There's a Refreedance Tower too, but part of the thing where I first and second pick fetch lands, or I guess first and third pick fetch lands, is... I want to be able to take the really good cards, and I think Baleful Strix is a really good card. Like, it's a very high caliber card. Also, again, fits perfectly into what we're doing here. Passing Tom, a Rafine's Tower, probably. The Batter School's still there, too. All the white cards went. There was Recruiter of the Guard and uh, Elite Spellbinder. So, well, wait, the Spellbinder was in the second pack. Never mind. That's this next pack that had Recruiter of the Guard and Spellbinder, I think. So, the Volcanic went, um, Snapcaster went. So not the end of the world here. Next up, ooh, Ashiok and Night's Whisper. Oh, that's actually a close one. I'm not going to take Usher of the Fallen. I'm not really into that. I do like Night's Whisper. I think in a six-player draft, I'm more inclined to want Ashiok, especially since Sandy Dog often drafts aggro, though he's, he's you know, diverged from that a bit more recently, which is good. And... Gavin often drafts mid-range creature decks, and Ashok is pretty good against mid-range creature decks and is okay against aggro. I mean, I do like Night's Whispers, but I think I'm going to go with Ashok. Oh, wow, this is actually tough. I didn't... First of all, no one's really comboing. Tom might take this Frantic Search now, or Abram. Abram does like drafting combo, but uh, probably going to take Days here over Collective Brutality. I just haven't found Collective Brutality to be that good. Okay, Kroxa Wield... So did Blood Chief's Thirst and Temporal Mastery. I do have Brainstorm for Temporal Mastery. That is kind of cute. Hmm. I don't think Blood Chief's Thirst is amazing. It's okay. I would play it. But Temporal Mastery has a pretty high upside. Yeah, I want to try to get Brainstorm Temporal Mastery going. Plus, this will be a learning pick. I I'm kind of curious how good it is to try and do that. Okay, so Watery Grave is gone, but we haven't seen Underground Sea or Scrubland. Rafine's Tower is unfortunately gone. Oh, Ravgrim Triumph did wheel. Okay. So no one took Fire Blaster or Dire Fleet Daredevil. I guess all the green cards got taken, but Ravgrim Triumph is a nice pickup, even if, uh, you know, it's not uh, not a, not the Rafine's Tower that would have been nicer. Okay, so now it's Mesmeric Fiend versus Archangel Avacyn. Avacyn I like when you have a few more creatures in your deck, and I'm passing two five-drop white cards. All right, someone... Tom can take one or both of those. Hopefully, Abram doesn't let Sandy get one of those last pick. I'm assuming Tom's going to take Avacyn. I think Avacyn's, like, slightly better. And then I hope Abram takes Gideon and gives Sandy a last pick, Mind's Desire. Though, if Abram got that Frantic Search, maybe we'll take that Mind's Desire. Who knows? Um, I think Bolus' Citadel is so unbelievably bad. I think I'm just going to take Embreath Shieldbreaker. That card's actually good. Yeah, Bulls of Citadel is too bad. I can't do it. All right, I'll pass Tom a, a turnabout because I think Woe Strider is at least a consideration or a sideboard card. And, oh, last pick, Collective Brutality. All right, well, I feel pretty good about not taking it then. That card is it, it is good against aggro. I just, I, I'm not the biggest fan of it, but getting it for free is nice. Okay. High on my list of cards to pick up is Ephemerate. I've got three creatures that are all fairly good with it. Mesmeric Fiend especially, so... This says when it enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals his or her hand, you exile a card. But it's not temp it's templated in the way that some of the older cards were, which is if you play Mesmeric Fiend in response to the trigger, ephemerate it, it'll leave play, return nothing, because it hasn't exiled anything, and then come back into play uh, and eat something, as well as eating another thing on the way. Oh, there's a Mox Emerald. All right, not the ideal Mox, but it is a Mox. Can't complain. Um... I would like to get this Scrubland back if I can. That would be nice. Mm. And that dog needs to chill out. Uh, what's going to go here? Stoneforge. Whoever took Batter School is probably going to want Stoneforge. Metamorph Fall was great. Arid Mesa. Expressive Iteration. Steam Vents. Yeah, there's a pretty good chance Scrubland comes back, I would say. I mean, I'm not passing the mock, so it kind of... It's a moot point in terms of, uh, you know, considering anything else, but I'm just kind of curious to see if I will get that back. Yeah. So we got uh, new neighbors here, and they have a dog, and our fence, you know, is right next to there. We have a fence separating the two yards and in the back, and our dogs love barking at each other. It's like the highlight of their day. They just go out, and they see if the other one's there, and if they're both there, they just bark at each other. 
but like with their tails wagging and just like really activated. And if one of them's there and the other isn't, they'll throw out a couple exploratory barks to see if they're pals around. And if so, ooh, it's on. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we'll, we'll get a better sense of what Gavin is up to this pack. Okay, we got the Kiki Jiki coming back this way. Maybe someone's X-Arking. There's, um, or sorry, not Gavin, Tom. We were passing to, Gavin was passing us last time. Tom took, who knows? This pack isn't the strongest. Sheldock is decent. Sheldock's also kind of nice with Temporal Mastery and Brainstorm. Animate Dead is also just a good card in general. And I have a Collective Brutality. I could consider taking Animate Dead. There's also Dismember. I think you know how much I love that card. Hmm. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind a piece of removal. I wonder if I should take Animate Dead, Sheldock, or Dismember. I can't really consider... I don't, I'm don't. i not considering taking Sparrow's Headquarters, Course of Portal, Trop, any of those. Someone will get a Kiki. I like a Braid too, but I guess I do have the red fixing for a Braid. But I think Dismember is a little bit better at this point. Yeah, this is one of those picks that like I don't really know the answer. It's just... I think black's pretty open. I guess I'll take Animate Dead, but I could honestly see it being any of those cards. Well, here I'm just going to take Force of Will. I already have a decent amount of blue cards, and I anticipate getting more. Force is just a really good card. It's just, you get to tap out and still counter their spell. Not really that complicated. There's also Path, Probe, Exhum, Thunder Maw, Repeal, Teferi. Yeah, I don't know. None of those cards are like super interesting for me. Yeah, that anime dead pick, it's, it's close. I don't know. Um, I don't really know what... I mean, Sheldock is a bit slow is my main concern with Sheldock. I like Animate Dead as a value card. Look, I can just like vindicate their creature and then animate it. I can grief them and animate the grief, which is a huge combo. Like turn one landmarks grief pitching is just awesome. Oh, I'll just take Prismatic Vista here. I like Damnation, but I'm not gonna take it over a sick five color land. Might even come back, who knows. And I have Brainstorm with three fetches now, which is awesome. This pack's also just Pretty weak in general, like Sandy's gonna get a Steel Seraph seventh pick or whatever. <laughs> uh, like what's gonna be gone here? Utopia Sprawl for sure, Indotha Triumph, Steel Seraph, Talisman, and then maybe Misha's Workshop, someone's feeling spicy, or a Sun Titan. Maybe whoever took Bulls as Citadel takes Sphinx, try to set up a Tinker, or maybe someone already has a Tinker at this point, who knows? Another good tiebreaker here if I end up Choosing between cards is with Force of Will, I kind of want blue cards. But, uh, this pack's pretty weak. Not a big Time Twister fan in this kind of deck. It doesn't really work. What do I take, though? Well, I could take Godless Shrine. It's better than Concealed Courtyard because it's fetchable. So it turns Flooded Strand into black, and it turns Marsh Flats into black-white at the same time, which is still good. Like, I do still want lands that can tap for both. I only have the two white cards, though, and I'm feeling pretty good on white fixing. I could take Zagoth Triome, but... Because I didn't get that Mox Emerald, you never know, right? But... And that turns Marsh Flats into blue, but a Marsh Flats is already blue because of Route Grand Triome. And then there's Wall of Omens, which is a fine card. It'll work in my Ephemerate deck. Um, I think the Scrubland's pretty likely to wheel. I think I'm actually just going to take Wall of Omens here. Oh, now there's... I love Fatal Push, but I also love Lingering Souls. I also love Treasure Cruise, but I might be able to second wheel that, because this pack's pretty good, right? Like, there's Fatal Push, Chain Lightning, Talisman, O-Ring, Dark Slick Shores. Assuming I take the Lingering Souls for a second. There's also Karn if someone's doing big mana. Pack Rat people inexplicably take. I think that card's really bad. And Karmic Guy. Yeah, like every card in this pack is playable, actually, so... Lingering Souls has decent outs of coming back, and I really like Lingering Souls. It's good with Planeswalkers, though I only have one of those so far. It's good with Collective Brutality. It's just a good card in general. There's also Fatal Push. Lingering Souls does... Yeah, I don't know. That one's tough, because I, I do like both cards. All right, the Scrubland came back. Happy about that. Yeah, I think actually the exact cards I, I thought were going to be gone are gone. <laughs> And nothing's coming back out of this. May I would play Sensei's Divining Top with the three fetches, probably. There's going to be... Someone's going to take... I mean, maybe I'll get Revelark back or Kitchen Finks. 
Definitely beside you is going. I would say Witherbloom Command and Explore. Though I guess that's all green cards. There might not, there's probably not three green drafters. How am I doing playables wise? I have six lands. Yeah, I'm doing fine. I have a Woe Strider too. Okay. Uh, Spar's Headquarters came back. I'm not even really that kind of stoked about taking it. I guess this deck could play Coercive Portal. I'm really not the biggest fan of that one either. It's kind of a four mana artifact that just gets blown up a lot of the time. Dismember and Abrade both got taken in, you know, probably not a big shocking twist. Hmm, there's Memory Deluge. I find that card to be kind of mediocre too. It's it's pretty slow. There's also Elesh Norn. Elesh Norn's not unreasonable. It's an it's a good animate target that you can also just hard cast. Yeah, all right, I'll, I'll go for Elesh. I, I really just don't like... Uh, the course of portal all that much. Though I guess it's kind of good against me. I still vindicate. Uh, repeal versus Teferi. So how good is this Teferi? Whenever it's five mana, four loyalty. Whenever you draw a card, it gets a loyalty counter. So zero draw, minus two, make a two, two that with vigilance and gets a plus one, plus one counter when you draw a card. And there's minus 12, you do some stuff. Um, I mean, it's that or repeal. I don't really care about any of the other cards passing them or anything. I think I'd rather just take Repeal. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't. That Teferi doesn't look very good. All right. I guess I'll just take the Andatha Triumph if it's free. I don't think anyone's playing combo. Yeah, black, white, green Lancer. Of note, now I have a free green splash because now I have one, two, three, four. If I play a forest, a bunch of green splashes for free. This isn't the worst showdown of the Scalds deck. And I have Browgren Triumph, but I probably just want to take Godless Shrine here. And then I'm passing Gavin a Showdown. That's probably fine. Yeah, a lot of these cards aren't that good when you have a Showdown. Like, Showdown hitting Force of Will is pretty bad. Oh, Pack Dark Silk Shores Wield and so did Pack Rat. Oh, okay. Um... What did I think I was, or what was I hoping to wheel out of this pack? Oh, I guess Fatal Push wasn't going to come back. All right, whatever, I'll take Dark Slick Shores. I don't, I actually don't love Talismans in like a low curve deck like this. And I'm not a biggest Karmic Guide fan. All right, I, I think I would play Sensei's top. Yeah, all the green cards couldn't go. I guess I'll take Hazaret. There's no way Gavin's playing combo. I got like last pick, you know, uh, turnabouts and stuff like that. All right, people in the server have definitely gotten better at not taking the bad cards. I will say that. Um, oh, this is a this is a good pack. Wow. I mean, no power, but there's Thoughtseize, which is awesome. Kaido Shizuki, which I really like. Atroxa, which is good. Oh, also Sensei's Divine Top Temporal Mastery. Boom. Extra combo. And Atroxa. There's Time Spiral, but I don't think that's that likely to be played. There's Sneak Attack, and I didn't see any of the big Eldrazi. Inquisition is just basically worse than Thoughtseize, so... I don't think I can take a Troxa here. I could cast it for seven, but I don't have enough reanimate stuff to really make it that good. I think I just gotta take Thoughtseize. That card is one mana, so efficient. What's gonna get taken? Uh, let's see, Sneak, Kaito, Atroxa, Pestermite, Inquisition, Nissa. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna get anything back. This pack's not that deep, but I also don't think I can pass Thoughtseize. Mox Sapphire. Gavin opened something good. All right, I'll take the Mox Sapphire. Giver's going to be gone. Chromox is going to be gone. Crater Hoof's going to be gone. It's, well, one of Giver or Student of Warfare, I guess. Probably not both. That means Venser, Consider, Moldrifter, Dothy, Voidwalker. I'm going to have a choice of, a, of some of those. In fact, I don't think it's really possible for the five cards I want to be gone to be gone, which is the three blue cards, Voidwalker and Chromox. Because someone's going to want to take Crater Hoof for one of these white cards, I think. Well, all right. We'll take it. Um, now I really am looking for a little bit of action. Oh, there's the Ephemerate, but there's also an Orcish Bowmasters. Oh, yeah. All the time, all the draw sevens are gone. There's also a him too. How good is this pack? I think I got to take Bowmasters. Like, Ephemerate's good with these four creatures. But it's possible Ephemerate's not good in anyone else's deck, and Bowmasters is so good. All right. I'm going to take the Bowmasters, and then there's Him, Cradle, Skrelv, Ulamog, Consecrated Sphinx, maybe Upheaval, maybe Red Black Talisman. 
Probably not Hornet Queen. I think only one of Hornet Queen Cradle are going to go. Maybe Soul Herder. Oh, uh, the fact that I, I, I will wheel either Ephemerate or Soul Herder, fairly likely, makes me pretty happy. Plus, this deck would actually happily play Dig Through Time. Oh, Treasure Cruise. That was the card I wanted to wheel that I didn't. Dang. All right, well, who cares about Thespian Stage? The Dark Depths is gone. I'm just going to take Prayer Dane. Can't go wrong with that. And how many playables is this? 29 with... 10 lands, so that's 19, so that's my 20th playable. Yeah, we're doing fine on playables. Also, that pack is just kind of weak. Pretty big Loran fan. Also, a pretty big Parallax Wave fan. Mm, do I have any combos with Parallax Wave? I mean, I have Blink my own stuff. That is kind of a combo. Mm, I guess I can also Vindicate my own Parallax Wave or re Repeal it. That's a little sketchy. Uh, I do like Loran a lot. Parallax Wave is kind of busted, especially... Yeah, there's matchups where Parallax Wave is just unreal. And this, this deck's got a lot of combos with it, so I think I just take it. Plus, my mana is great. Okay. Don't think I'm going to get Loran back. Unless, unless, if Sandy, we're assuming, you know, for good reason, is the only other white drafter, maybe they take Vryn Wingmare, someone takes Murktide, two of the lands get taken... And someone takes Nyla Reliquary or Bitter Blossom? Yeah, I'm not going to get that thing back. That's okay. I like the way this deck's looking, though. Ooh, and now we get a Vendillion Click. This is actually not a terrible Dark Confidant deck or Trinket Mage deck, to be honest, but I, I'm just going to take the V-Click here. Especially with two Moxes, it's really nice to just be able to drop out V-Click. And then there's Creeping Tarpet, Dark Confidant, Trinket Mage. I would play any of those. So we just need someone to take Inferno Titan, Eternal Witness, Sword, maybe Imperial Seal. Yeah. All right. And that was pick six, right? So we're, we got... We've seen all the cards that we're going to see in this draft at this point. And this is 22 playables, which... Totally fine. I mean, this is a pretty nice little deck. Ooh, Kaito Wield with two Mox is my deck? Hmm. You love to see it. No one even took Pestermite. Wow. I am surprised. I did not think Kaito was going to wheel out of this pack. Atroxa not wheeling doesn't surprise me. So they took like Atroxa Sneak. One of the, some, there's some white card, I'm sure. Ah, well, well, I guess I'm not going to question it. All right, let's put Kaito and Ashiok here, actually. So consider and Moldrifter. Oh, I got to take Moldrifter because I'm really hoping to wheel at Ephemerate. All right. If I don't wheel Ephemerate or Soul Herder, I'm going to be really annoyed. And Giver got taken, or Student of Warfare got taken over Giver, which I'm not so in the weeds on the uh, white weenie pick order to know whether that's good or not. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. This is like such a good ephemerate deck now. But I think, yeah. I think Bowmasters is too good to pass. Also, Bowmasters is so good in every deck, passing such a powerful card to an opposing team when Ephemerate's probably a zero in their deck, it can't be. That can't be good cube drafting, so or team drafting. So even if Ephemerate was better for my deck, which I don't even know is true, you can't really do that. So, okay. I'm really on the fence, or on the edge here. If I can get that Ephemerate, I'll be really happy. Oh, there it is. The Soul Herder got taken, but the Ephemerate didn't. Oh, I'm gonna slam it. I have four, five, Six, seven, seven good ephemerate targets. Yeah, that is plenty. And a lot of dig. Well, I'm unfortunately not going to take the actual dig. Actually, how did this wheel when dig through time, the cradle got taken? The soul herder got taken. Didn't anticipate that. The sphinx didn't get taken or to dig or to talisman. But I guess everything else made sense. All right, well, now, now we're really popping. If we could get like one more ETB creature, <laughs> I don't even know if there is one at this point. That would be sick. But... Still, we have seven good ETB creatures. That is, and we have Preordain, Brainstorm, Sensei's Divining Top. Like, we have ways to find them. Okay, I, I like where this deck's at. This deck's going to be fun to play. Uh, do I want to play both Indotha Triumph and Raugrin Triumph? That I don't know. I'm going to have to look at deck building. Because if I picked up the Atroxa, I was hoping to wheel. I could get that cheeky Indotha Triumph in there, but unfortunately not. Uh... Blood gas doesn't do anything for me. I don't really care about passing a Garrick. I, I guess I'll just take the Mortars. There's like an off chance that I would play a Museum Mortars because I do have that Raugrin Trium, so I and the Prismatic Vista and the two fetches. So one mountain gives me five red sources. 
still not really that exciting, especially since I'm already cutting cards. I need to cut like two from this deck, I think. Mm, I, I mean, repeal can probably go, and then maybe I could play like 14 lands plus the two moxes, so effectively 16 lands, but with Sensei's Divining Top, Brainstorm, Preordain. Oh, Vryn Wingmare stayed. So Loran didn't come back. I didn't think it was going to. The two good lands got taken. The worst land is still here. Murktide's still here too. I don't use the graveyard at all, right? And I have four, nine, 10, 11 spells. I actually kind of like Murktide in some, some places. Okay, and Creeping Tar Pit and Dark Confidant both wield. Oof. Well, if I cut Elish Norn and Murktide, that our confidant gets better. I oh Trinket Mage for Sensei's top and the two Moxes. Oh, I kind of like that actually. All right, yeah, let's let's do that. All right, let's just hate the Hell Rider. It's the only playable. Uh, uh, Tom's not playing Mono Red. Let's just take that. And then last pick Ulamog. Okay, whoever took Sneak was not interested in that Ulamog. So it is awkward to take Trinket Mage over Creeping Tar Pit when I'm already cutting cards, but. I actually think the, the potential of Trinket Mage seems pretty solid here. All right, let's get to deck building, see how our teammates did, and uh, round this out here before we get to playing. Alrighty, this is what we've got. I ended up playing 16 land, well, 14 plus the two moxes, counting as land, because my mana is pretty good. I have Preordain, Brainstorm, and Sensei's Divining Top is fixing, plus lots of cantrips. The last couple cuts were the Repeal, the Murktide, and the Elish Norn. I think I will board probably some number of those in in various matchups, but this deck seems like a pretty uh, pretty solid package here. I really like this deck. Low curve, a lot of good interactive stuff, and then the Ephemerate combo could lead to some pretty nice draws. Uh, my teammates have some good decks too. Uh, Abram's got a sick mono green deck, basically all the mono green cards. Now he's the only, I think the only green drafter at the table, which has got it all. So really looking forward to that. This is with, with he's going to cut a couple cards. This was the pre-cut list, but the only card he's missing is a uh, natural order. It just wasn't open, but four out, one drop elves, Rafelos, Wall of Roots, all the big stuff, channel. Deck looks awesome. I expect Abram to do well. And then uh, the real LSV, Luis Salvado's got a nice Oath of Druids brew. I guess Ely Cassis was, uh, was, was represented here with Demonic Tutor, Oath of Druids, one real mox and some fake ones. Uh, and then Emrakul and Sun Titan to go get, plus some Planeswalkers. Yeah, this deck looks pretty sweet. So we're playing round one. We are against the Sandy Dog. And we are going to keep this hand. It is a solid hand, I would say. It does have a little bit of awkwardness, like opening hand, temporal mastery, uh, ephemerate with no creatures, but Turn one, Sensei's Divining Top is always pretty nice, and then getting to uh, set up maybe a turn two Ashiok. I think, mm, looking, and he's, Sandy is indeed playing Mono White here, which turn two Ashiok's pretty good against them, though of course being on the play would be a lot better. I think looking at my deck, uh, yeah, in order to play turn two Ashiok, I have to play Marsh Flats and get Raugrin Trium. So unfortunately, I can't go land top spin. I mean, I guess I could, but I'm running the risk of missing, and I, don't, I think I'd rather just guarantee this. So that seems better, because missing on turn two Ashiok, like, if he plays a two power creature this turn, which is, <clears throat> you know, one of the plays he could certainly make, Ashiok goes up to five and can still like actually do something. Oh, he's not even playing any creature this turn. Okay, well, that's really nice. Let's get Raugrin Trium. Just draw for the turn. I, don't know, I drew the Dark Slick Shores. This is blue-black, so this actually works. Ashiok, hopefully don't get mana tithed. Hopefully don't get Cathar Commandoed. But it still wouldn't kill Ashiok, so it's not the end of the world. But if he doesn't have... A Cathar Commando here. I actually really like my spot. I hit Skrelv and exiled Black Lotus. <laughs> All right, well, good for me, I guess. It feels like he's got the Cathar Commando, though. All right, well, that's okay. Um, so here's the question. Do I want to upkeep top? I think so. 
my curve's pretty low. It's not like there's a four drop I'm wanting to play so badly. And uh, does he have a way to kill the Ashiok? Get plus one plus oh somehow? Oh, he's elite spellbinder. Uh, yeah, sure. That doesn't matter a ton. Like, Ephemerate's cheap enough. I mean, he takes the Temporal Mastery, I guess, but Temporal Mastery wasn't doing much unless I drew Brainstorm anyway, so... Obviously, him having 1-drop, 2-drop, 3-drop on the play is going to be hard, but I have I have some outs here. Oh, also, I can just get a Skrelv out of this Ashiok, which is pretty nice. So let's hold on. Let's see. So Ashiok's taking 4. Goes down to 1. Upkeep, spin the top. Oh, this is... Guess the drawback of using the fetch. All right, well, I do at least get to do the whole mesmeric fiend thing. So let's go scrubland, mesmeric fiend. And in response to the trigger, ephemerate. So mesmeric fiend leaves, brings nothing back. And then comes back. So this first trigger, this one is the one that Sandy will get back if he kills the Mesmeric Fiend. So I think I put the Esper Sentinel under the Mesmeric Fiend. And then this trigger is gone forever. And I just take the Sword of Light and Shadow forever. And then I minus one and play Skrelv because Ashiok's going to die. All right. He has a Planes in hand. My top two cards are garbage, unfortunately. Oh no, what did he draw? All right, I guess we're dead. <laughs> uh, well, I, I can technically take initiative back by using Skrelv, but like, yes, obviously him drawing the best card in his deck <laughs> right off the top there was bad for me. That's how you do it, Sandy Dog. That is how you do it. Mm. I guess I'm going to take it. He could kill my Skrelv now. Actually, probably does want to. Because if he doesn't kill Skrelv with Cathar Commando, I do get to do the thing. All right. Oh, he's going to kill the Mox. Hmm. Let's see. I'm going to untap a creature. It's fine. Um, flickering the Mesmeric Fiend doesn't do anything. So I guess I'd rather just... And this can't block. Let's just not have Mesmeric Fiend or Ephemerate get played, I guess. We'll just leave it exiled. All right. So my, I'm drawing a Swamp. There's an Indotha Trium under it. And then I don't know what the third card is. Uh, am I spinning the top? Killing the Mox makes this a little harder. I think I'm just going to draw... I'm going to scrove here. Taking, uh, I don't really want to take damage. <clears throat> take the initiative. And then, I guess I'll get an island, sure. And now I guess I'll Sensei's top. Oof. It's not looking good. I think I'm pretty dead here. So, it doesn't have initiative on upkeep. He gets to smash for six and take the initiative back and get, I guess, get two plus one plus one counters. Or smash for seven, yeah, just get that giver runes in there, why not? And then, I don't, I guess Parallax Wave is the card I'm looking for here. You know, I'm dead next turn for to trap if I let him keep initiative. So, sure, let's draw Kaito. To untap something. You know, I guess they get to untap Giver Runes. All right. Um, I'm looking for Parallax Wave, so I guess it doesn't matter whether I'm at five or at three. Let's pay that. Do pro white again. Let's 
Ascend with Mesmeric Fiend. And we're going to go into the Lost Well, which is a Scry 2. I'm going to Scry 2 lands to the bottom, and then I'm going to spin the top. And if I draw Parallax Wave, I actually have a decent chance this game, because I'll get rid of all his creatures and keep the initiative. All right. Scry 2. Bottom. Bottom. Spin the top. Come on. Parallax Wave. Oh, there's the Parallax Wave. All right. Let's do it this way. Play a land, draw with top. Okay, come on, Sandy, you just have a land in hand. And it doesn't help to, the Giver of Runes doesn't do anything here, because I just nug the Giver first. I guess I just stop on upkeep, that's probably fine. And then now I'm going to get to progress through, and I'm going to get Stash next, so I can maybe go Mold Drifter and something else. Oh, what is this? Solitude? Oh, Archangel Avacyn. Oh, man. Okay. Um, sure. I guess that's fine. That's going to make things hard because it cuts down on the parallax waving by a turn here. Man, Sandy, I need Sandy to miss once. <laughs> he has yet to miss. The sandiest of dogs. All right, well. <clears throat> We'll have to see, huh? Okay. Okay. Parallax wave your giver of runes. Doesn't matter what you target. I'm going to parallax wave them all. Yeah. So if you didn't have the Avacyn, this would go down to one counter. Or two counters rather, and then I'd remove one, and then I'd remove one, and that might be enough time to, to win, but <clears throat> I don't think we're gonna have enough time here to win before all the the things come back. I guess we'll find out, won't we? Mm-hmm. Cause I just get a one turn window to do this now. Oh man, he drew another card? And it's expensive? Oh, hang her back for two. Sure. All right. Uh, let's venture into the Undercity. Let's get a treasure. Draw. <clears throat> we'll draw Sensei's Dividing Top. So five, six, six. I'm still two away from casting... Uh, <clears throat> Temporal Mastery here. Draw, Mold Drifter. Mm. I don't even really know what I'm trying to accomplish here. But, because next turn, all his stuff's going to come back too. You can even attack with the hanger back if you wanted to, I guess, but I don't know how good that would be. All right, let's venture into the Undercity. Am I going to be able to go all the way here? I get a Catacombs. Oh, I guess he's going to get initiative back here. Here's where a Containment Priest would have been sick. Do I have outs here? I have I'm not even that close to casting Temporal Mastery. I guess there's a chance I cast Temporal Mastery, and I'm going to hit the... I can hit throne. All right. Well, let's let's just see. I mean, he gets. Oh, he just gets to trap me. Never mind. It's literally just over. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, given an extra turn with Avacyn, I'm or without Avacyn, I might have had a chance. But Elish Norn, I kind of like. Repeal, I kind of like. A little scared of temporal mastery against Elite Spellbinder. That was pretty brutal. Days could be good on the play. Pretty bad on the draw. I like Ashiok on the play still. Trinket Mage. I mean, I like all the cards in my deck. I think I got to run the Sensei's top. I guess maybe Temporal Mastery is not the jam. So Elish Norn, I'm, I'm playing just to cast, but also if I, I happen to draw Collective Brutality or Kaito to discard, and I have Animate Dead, that's just a nice little out. I think Mesmeric Fiend is okay. Maybe I just don't play the Repeal. It's not like the best just okay. Let's do the thing. 
Yeah, that was tough. I mean, I thought it was looking pretty good after his Merrick Fiend. It was close, at least. And then he played White Plume, and it was a lot less close after that. But I do have some pretty good potential starts here. Eh, I like my outs. All right. He does have Black Lotus, though. I do got to watch out for that. Ooh, I like this hand. All right. I'm going to keep this. Lead on Dark Slick Shores and really hope that whatever he plays on turn one gets killed by Bowmaster. Like, just, 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 just lead on like an Esper Sentinel or something like that. Mm. 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 Yeah, Ancestral Recall. I guess that's probably what Frog opened is Ancestral over uh, Mock Sapphire. Legit pick. But this is a really good hand. This hand's, I think, better than the last one. Alrighty, Mulligan six. Right, let's go preordain. Definitely don't want swamp. I'll keep Vendillion click. Oh, Vendillion click, Orcish Bowmasters. That's a combo. That is a combo. You get to make them draw another card, triggering the Bowmaster. Okay, hopefully he plays like a Student of Warfare in turn one. That would be nice. Wow, Sandy took Student of Warfare and got Giver of Runes back with three cards in the pack or whatever. Pretty good call. Pretty good. Just don't play Giver of Runes. All right. Well, nothing is also fine, I suppose. Uh, I guess I'm just going to play Baleful Strix. Uh, I'm not too worried about Mana Tithe. If I get Tithed, I get Tithed. They can't play around a Mana Tithe they don't even know about. And... As much as I like the Bowmaster's Vendillion Click curve, I could just wait a turn. I don't have to play Vendillion Click on three. I just really would rather not play the Bowmaster without a good uh, target for it. Oh. <laughs> nice sideboard plan. Wow, look at that Elish Norton. Then again, I guess that would have been Temporal Mastery, which would have been way worse to draw. So there we have it. If he just passes, I was... Oh, man, that's annoying. That's not what I wanted to see. I was going to say I was going to play... Uh, Top and Bowmaster. Uh, let's go Mesmeric Fiend here to kick things off. Let's see what we're working with. Flicker Wisp, Loran, Elish Norn, Mother of Machines, Sword of Light and Shadow. I guess I'll just take the sword. And I'm going to get Loran, but I don't really mind that too much. Baleful Strix down. Because his next turn is almost assuredly going to be Plains, Loran, the, the Baleful Strix. So uh, I might upkeep top. I kind of want to hit land drops, and I think it would be nice to, to maybe upkeep top to do that. Yeah, there goes the Loran. There goes the Baleful Strix. Let's see if he attacks with the Giver of Runes. Sandy's pretty aggressive about doing so, which I don't think is bad. I mean, it's 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 generally good to, to be aggressive. All right, let's top upkeep, because I would like to hit a land drop this turn if we can. Mm. Okay, I mean, we technically did. So I could Ashiok here, but I think I'm going to go land Bowmasters down the Loran here. I want to Vendillion click that Elish Norn before it hits, but I have a little time to do that. And Bowmaster killing Lauren of the third path. And then sending for one. Unfortunately, he's probably not going to attack with the Giver of Runes this time. So I'm not going to get to snipe it again. But it's not like Flicker Wisp. Well, actually, he might. He might go Flicker Wisp, kill your Orc army token, attack with Giver of Runes, which sets up Vendillion click and uh, trigger Bowmasters again. Also, I get to spin the top here. I would like to spin into a, a, a white land, hopefully. Yeah, I think flickering the army is the best. And given the attack last turn, he might attack again. But that <clears throat> it's a little dicer with a Bowmaster in play. All right. Spin the top. Animate dead. Well, he didn't play a land. So that part is nice, I guess. Draw Ashiok. So if I play Ashiok, Flicker Wisp can attack Ashiok down to two. 
I think that's okay. And I can wait to turn on the Vidillion. Seems fine to me. Plus two. Nug you. Hit Student of Warfare, Skyclave, and Adeline. All right, nice. Pass the turn here. What I would like to set up, I guess what I get to do is next turn, so I flick Rosepa Tax, Ash, down to two. Fine. Next turn, I get to Vendillion click, attack with Flickers, Vendillion click you. I'm probably going to have to draw step Vendillion click. Bowmaster is the Flicker Wisp, and then he's got to use Giver at that point to give Pro black, at which point the Vendillion click can block the Flicker Wisp, buying Ashiok another turn, so it probably doesn't attack with Flicker Wisp. Unfortunately, he's going to get to play probably a decent card this turn. Anduril, Flame of the West. Okay. Mm, that might be a different plan. Can I hit a land, please? All right, I guess I'm going to have to do it this way. That's fine. We're going to get rid of our Sensei's Divining Top, I think. You know, Top, you did good work. I appreciate it. But I'm going to draw a card here, and I think we might have to risk Elish Norn coming down. Because I don't really see a way around it. Because I'm going to go Trinket Mage. And by Elish Norn, I mean Sandy's Elish Norn. Uh, Trinket Mage. Yes, Mox Sapphire, Mox. Animate dead your Loran. And kill the Endurl. Ashiok, you go up to four. Hit Skrelv and hit Plains Winds of Abandon. Okay. Uh, no attacks here. The other thing is Loran actually gives me good Bowmaster outs. Okay, so if he doesn't play a land this turn, I'm pretty happy. But that also means he has two spells that aren't Elish Norn in hand. But I like where we're at. I mean, I think I'm in a winning position right now. It's obviously close. If he slams Elish Norn, well, that makes a lot of the cards in my deck worse, definitely. But I have a Vindicate to kill it, and it's not over. Also, I'm at 19 still, and the Flicker Wisp is going to kind of be priced into attacking Ashiok Nightmare Weaver here, I think. Yeah. Okay, I mean, I can't block. No, I don't even upkeep stop anymore because I don't have a top. Okay, didn't draw a land, so what is he going to play instead? Oblivion Ring. Okay, what's getting O-ringed here? I honestly could see almost any number of things. The Loran, sure, because Loran plus Bowmasters is pretty obnoxious. Draw, Swamp, come on. Swamp is brutal here, but what can you do? I don't think putting in a Skrelv is like that valuable. Let's just Ashiok you again. Swamp is so bad because Elish Norn's getting pretty close to castable here, but instead, nope. Uh, I hit the Black Lotus and Course of Portal. Oh, uh, yeah. Swamp instead of a white source is rough. All right, well, I'm going to get to draw step V click. I really just don't want. <clears throat> that Elish Norn to hit. So V click U. Okay. Reveal Cathar Commando. Don't care about that too much, Elish Norn. All right. I'll put Elish Norn on the bottom. Bowmaster's the Flicker Wisp. So his hand right now is Plains Cathar Commando. He's probably gonna give Flicker's Pro Black, which doesn't mean I don't get an army, but that's okay. But then I get to minus three, the Ashiok, if I want to put like a Skyclave Apparition into play or something. Or an Adeline. It basically just buys me uh, an Ashiok, which I think is good, while also getting rid of Elish Norn. He can also kill the O-Ring <laughs> if he wants. Right, what is this? No, did he draw unexpectedly absent? Oh, Elite Spellbinder. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's fine. I mean, it's whatever. I guess he just 
takes Elish Norn. <laughs> it's not like I could cast that one anyway. By the time I get two white, it'll actually be just about easy enough to cast. So his last card's Cathar Commando. So I have an Elish Norn hanging out. Do you want to trade Flickerwus for Vendillion Click is the question. Okay, let's draw. Not a blue or black land. Okay, Scrubland is a start. Let's play Wall of Omens. And see where we're at here. Mm -hmm. Come on. All right, so Ashiok is going to go down next turn. So in that case, I might as well get something out of it. The question is, what do I get? He's got a Cathar Commando in hand. I can get Adeline? I'm at 19, he's at 16, huh? If I get Adeline, I could then attack with these three things and I get a token. And let's say he just takes it, he takes seven. No, he's gonna play the Cathar Commando to block the Bowmasters, I guess. Sure. He takes six down to 10, has no cards in hand. He's got two three ones and I've got an Adeline coming in. Or I could get a Skyclave and kill one of the three one flyers. Killing Giver of Rune seems pretty bad, but, well, it's not crazy to kill the Giver of Runes, because then the Vendillion Click can trade for, like, say, Flicker Wisp, and then I buy it buys me time to get the, I'm at 19 facing an Elite Spellbinder, plus whatever he draws, but also if I draw a Plains, I can have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, in two turns I'll just be able to cast Elish Norn. I should probably not, I probably don't need to race. I probably want to lean towards casting Elish Norn. So I'm gonna attack with the Trinket Mage then. Seems fairly free to do that. Okay. He's gonna walk, potentially. And if you play it there, it kind of indicates your desire to block. Mm. Okay, or not. All right, let's go minus x, x equals three. Let's get Skyclave Apparition, Skyclave Giver of Runes, which also means if he kills the Skyclave, he gets a dork back. And then pass, and now he gets to attack with two three ones. I can block with Vendillion Click on one of them. If he ever draws an extra card, the Orcish Bowmasters goes nuts. This is gone. And I have the Elish Norn tucked away here, but kind of ready to go. The Cathar Command is very far from dealing damage to me. I'm snapping off the block, and I think I'll block Flicker Wisp because the Elite Spellbinder, like if you were to copy or Flicker as Elite Spellbinder, it's a lot less scary because it doesn't do anything right now. He drew S percent. Oh, sure. That's just a straight up brick. Okay. Actually, that might not even be good to play. It lets me. Uh, I can actually just give him a card to trade for Elite Spellbinder. Yeah, I mean, I kind of like doing that, actually. First of all, Lingering Souls is a fantastic card. Mm. Actually, I lied. I'm not going to let him draw a card because Lingering Souls already dunks on Elite Spellbinder. There's no real need to, there's no real need to, to give him a card here. A card could only lead to bad things, like him killing this Mesmeric Fiend. I will attack with my Trinket Mage. Nah, I could attack a Skyclave, but I don't even really think that's good. All right, now I'm in a spot where we both have no cards in hand. I have a very dominant board, and if I draw a Plains, a White Source, which I have a bunch of, I just play Elish Norn in the game just completely. Yeah, so this one is going to be hard for him to come back from. Even a White Plume Adventure doesn't really do it. Uh, what is this? Oh, it's a Hangerback Walker for two. No, it's a Steel Seraph. Okay. So this looks really bad, by the way. Just very ugly. But 3-3 uh, three, three Flyer, and they can give Flying Vigilance or Lifelink? Sure. Lifelink 3-1 Flyer. Does he want to trade it for a Spirit Token? I guess not. All right. Any planes? Any planes? I was going to blow up a Mox. That's actually a really good play. No. Well, yes, this is 
This is like blowing up a mox with extra steps, but still a good play. And it probably just killed a mox emerald at this point. I mean, I could have a random green card. You never know. Disrespectful. Because uh, I have four, five, six, seven, eight mana. So I have the white, <coughs> the white source now. I guess I don't really have any attacks because that steel are off, but it's not actually that imposing. I'm not even going to crack the Vista because I don't want to shuffle. I would like to draw lands. And I'm at 16. I'll probably triple block the Steel Seraph, I think. Because this, is, this gives Flying Vigilance or Lifeline. It doesn't give any combat abilities. No, it doesn't even attack. <sighs> I'm not even going to play Thought Seize here. I don't think it does anything. And he can't use Lauren to the third path, or at least if he does, it would be a pretty risky idea, given that I'm a land short of casting Elish Norn, and I've got Orcish Bowmasters in play. <laughs> oh my god, are you kidding me? He had drew swords to plowshares? Oh, I could have thought seized him, but it just didn't seem like that was a good idea. Now he gets the Sword of Light and Shadow back. Ugh. Okay, I still win with any land, I think. Or, it's close at least. Because he puts this on, what? The Steel Seraph? He could put it on Elite Spellbinder, but then I could... No, I can't even block it. So I guess he just puts it on Spellbinder and gives it Lifelink. Oh my god. Swords to Blood. Uh, if I don't draw a land this turn, this is going to be, be quite the... Quite the loss. Well, he can't actually... Oh, he can't target the Spellbinder anymore to give it lifelink. Oh, that's actually really good for me. Not being able to lifelink his, his attacker does make it a lot more likely that I can race here. So I can't block. All right. I think I still win the game with an untapped land. I mean, it's going to get... I'm not going to... I only have like one turn to do it, though, because next turn he's going to get Cathar Commando. Like, he can get Cathar Commando now if he wants, but next turn he's going to be able to blow up my Mox. He gets Flicker Wisp? Sure. Okay. I mean, I guess I Force of Will now, because... Do I want to... Do I want to give him a card? What does that do? That doesn't do anything. I'm thought seizing here because I need to be able to counter what he plays, and this way I can thought seize one and counter the other. Um, I guess I take Flicker Wisp. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. This is going to be <laughs> quite the beat. All right. Still can't target the Spellbinder. Okay, he can do something to S percent or whatever. Attack. So I take six, seven, that puts me to three, and then that I shrink that down to three. So I guess I kind of have to block this in order to buy myself an extra turn here. Okay, he gets back Flicker Wisp, which I guess can flicker like Steel Seraph or something. I mean, I'm going to counter it with Force of Will anyway. Because next turn I attack for 3, 7, 11, like 17. Counter that. You play Stoneforge. See if he has the batter skull to go along with the other two equipment. No, he does not. All right. <sighs> I mean, I guess I could draw Vindicate. No, at this point, I'm basically dead. And I guess I have to attack with. Shrink a mage in order to 
draw an extra card. I mean, I'm not technically dead. Uh, he loses two life and I gain two life, but I don't really see how I'm going to win this game now. Because even if I draw Elish Norn or a land for Elish Norn that now, the uh, Spellbinder puts me to one, and then I don't have lethal. I guess my out next turn is to draw Vindicate into. I mean, I guess I just get two draw steps to draw Vindicate, sure. I mean, Attack Malorian is free, I guess. Um, oh, he wants to get... Oh, he can already get back Cathar Commando. I mean, at this point, it doesn't matter. The Elish Norn isn't going to... Elish Norn might come down this game. It's not going to win me this game. Like, for me to... Or it's not going to be what I play next turn. All right, I go to one... Can get back whatever. I get. I mean, I get to look at two cards next turn because we get to my draw step and I get Kaito. And then well, once I do that, I, I guess I can't cast Vindicate and Parallax Wave. But honestly, even Vindicating the Sword, even that is enough to at least stall out the game. Mm. Teammates, Salvato lost to Alpha Frog and uh, Abrams in game three against Martel. So this is could be a bad round one. All right. Okay. And he is equipping. Sure. The problem is, even if I draw Vindicate now, he's got three flyers and I have two ground creatures. Ephemerate. Alright, um, so I have to attack with Kaito, or rather, not attack, with Kaito, attack so I can use Kaito. Let's see, Ephemerating a Bowmasters kills Elite Spellbinder, I guess I have to attack with Scott, attack with Skyclave, yeah, no, I, 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 I that's what, that's the one. Because I can't attack with the token. If the token dies, then... I mean, I need that one for a blocker. All right. And giving him back a 1-1 is not the end of the world, because I have Wall of Omens, and I'm going to get a, a mass token, probably. Oh, he didn't... Okay. Well, that's good, I guess. All right. Vindicate. <laughs> this is unbelievable. <laughs> My deck's just mocking me now. Um... I guess I have to ephemerate Wall of Omens because I can't ephemerate. And then, I mean, I couldn't parallax. All right, well, that was round one. What a what an unbelievable game. <laughs> uh, that's what it takes, I guess. Well, a rough round one, but I, I believe we can rally. All righty. Uh, unfortunately, we're down 0-2 now. Uh, and apparently our third match is not looking good for us, so we're in a bit of a, a hole here, but... Playing against Alpha Frog, playing like Jeskai Control. Alright. This is a solid hand. Yeah, ran pretty bad to lose that match against Sandy. I think both those games. Game one, I was like slightly ahead, and then he white plumed me. And then game two was. Really don't see how that happened, but uh, <laughs> it, it sure did. Alright, let's just get in our Indotha Triome here. Draw. Ooh, days. Don't mind that. Let's see, what does Frogerto have? Teferi, Nahiri, Snapcaster, Karma Guide, Venser, Fourth Eorlingus. All right, he's got some stuff. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ashiok, I like that. Um, let's go Ashiok. I hope he doesn't have Spell Pierce, I guess. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, plus two, and then can vindicate if uh, he plays something. All right, what did I get? Fourth year Lingus, that's a nice peel and Teferi. Okay. Also, getting to daze this turn would be excellent. Oh, well, I will daze that. I mean, it's not crazy to not daze the Ancestral. You know, he'd have 10 cards in hand. He'd play a land, go to nine, play a spell, go to eight. But I still feel like I can answer his next play fairly easily. And letting him draw three cards doesn't seem great to me. I mean, we'll see. We'll see if I end up regretting this. Mm, eh, all right. That's fine. That's not a huge deal. I mean... He still gets to Ancestral, but at least now he didn't get to double Ancestral. Mm, oh, I guess that got punished for high sequence by lands. I hit Monastery Mentor, is that what that was? Yeah. Land. Uh, yeah, let's just go for it. I'm going to Vindicate your Spara's headquarters here. I don't care if Ashiok gets attacked. This seems like a good way to use my mana. I've got Reprieve up at some point, but next turn, let's say Ashiok gets attacked down to 5. I can then put Ashiok to 2 to get Mentor into play with Reprieve off. And I don't know how much that's going to mana screw him or what, is he, what he's going to play this turn, but hopefully it's not anything too great. No, he didn't play anything. Oh, wow. And a Baleful Strix. Alright, let's start with Baleful Strix and see what's our thoughts on that. Alright. Let's put a Monastery Mentor into play and pass the turn with Reprieve up. Hopefully he doesn't, if he doesn't have a spell end of turn, I think I'm going to win this, yeah. My, my slightly cheaper spells are doing some pretty good work here. Or I guess I've just played, he's played Ancestral, Snapcaster Ancestral, I've played three spells so far. I've played Days Vindicate, Baleful Strix, Ashiok. I guess I've only played four spells so far, but mine have done a little bit more. And then after reprieving, I can Vendillion click or just hardcast Moldrifter. I guess it'll depend what I reprieve here. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm gonna block here. I mean, it's, a good, it's good to attack first because if he plays a spell and I play a counter first, then he can't even attack because of the Mentor. No plays, okay. And we're going to upkeep Vencer. Oh, that's going to try to get the Monastery Mentor back, huh? Okay, I'll reprieve the Vencer. Plus two Ashiok. Hit Resto and some lands. Play a land. V-click you. And is... Haha, <laughs> he had Force of Negation and I never gave him a... Good target. Path, Nahiri. Yeah, I'm going to take the Venser, I think. Yeah, and then I don't even have very many more spells, so I'm going to attack. If he wants to Nahiri the Monastery Mentor, I'm okay with that. Let's see, so Venser's gone. I guess he has Path as well. Well, then, then that's the other thing. He already has Path, so he can... Play Nahiri, minus two it, leave up path. And then is forced to like path the V-click, I guess. What would be nice next turn to draw, I think would be like a cantrip. Like any spell would be, not be bad. Treachery the mentor? Oh my God, that's really bad. Okay. That's really, really bad because now he's got Nahiri make a token. Yikes. Wait, did he play the wrong land? Because he can't leave path up now. Hmm. Okay. Uh, treachery? Hey, man, this is not my draft here. It really isn't. I think he played the mountain. Discarding planes. And then chain, and then chain into chain lightning. Sure. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Uh, I even drew the cantrip. 
I mean, I guess I do play it actually. Let's do this. Mox Emerald, Mesmeric Fiend. I'm just gonna put these on the bottom, I think. Maybe I want Mesmeric Fiend. Problem is, he can often just kill it. Let's see. Uh, so his hand is three cards. Skull Clamp is gonna be pretty annoying. Yeah, I guess I have to keep that. Is my conclusion. Wall of Omens. <laughs> Force Negation has been kind of bad. Collector Brutality. Oh. Okay, so he's four cards in hand. So now I have to decide is... No, I, I, I actually think I need to take the Skull Clamp anyway. I was thinking about Collector brutality -ing. The monastery mentor but my problem with that is if i do that he still gets to play skull clamp with two monks in play i don't love that idea but i guess if i mesmeric fiend he still just gets to path so let's minus four the angel oh i guess skull clamps actually with only 13 cards left Skull Clamp's not the end of the world. All right, let's flicker the wall. I think this is worth doing rather than plussing the Ashiok here. But I don't know. That is pretty close. Okay, draw. I'm just going to assume he does not have a blue card for force. Just, just please don't have it all. Okay, he did not. He had force Negation Karmic. So here's the karma guide. Okay, well, I'm gonna take the path because That's the only card That does something. I mean, I can't take the skull clamp. So his hand is Skull clamp force negation karmic guide. All right I'm playing this like grindy deck where I'm just trying to set things up and every time it's like that I, Every time my opponent gets a draw step. It's just like all right. I'm gonna draw the best card ever It's just look all I'm saying is magic's more fun when you're the one doing that as opposed to them doing that Well, I did get the fourth Eorlingus and the Teferi out. He does have five mana Teferi of Hero of Dominaria, I think. Karmic Guide out. Oh, I guess he doesn't have double white. Sure. Okay. I'm actually not feeling too bad about this. That was a pretty good turn. I got to go Resto, draw two, and... Kill your mentor. Yeah, that was overall pretty good. No attacks, okay. And then the monk is gonna die at the start of my turn, or I guess the end of his turn. I guess in cleanup, I think he might get priority again. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we know he has force of negation. Yeah, there's miscalculation in the draft, so I guess I do it this way. It's also apparently mana leak. Okay, I mean, I could have played Mesmeric Fiend first, so I guess maybe that was error, but I didn't really want to Mesmeric Fiend all that much. I wanted to keep my options open. Consecrate Sphinx, Force Negation, Soul Herder. Wow. Okay. I guess I'm going to take Consecrated Sphinx and attack Nahiri the Harbinger. And I did, since I played a spell first, his monk's a 2 2. All right. Yeah, I mean, I guess Mesmeric Fiending first would have worked out better. Well,. Kind of. I'm actually not sure that is true. Because if I miss Merrick Fiend first, I would see that hand and I guess still have to take Consecrated Sphinx. And then I couldn't, and then I just wait on Moldrifter. Yeah, I'm not, it is not that big of a difference. All right, we're going to Skull Clamp here. Is that how we're going to kick things off? You could recruit her, but I don't know how much you have left to recruit her for. This is turning out to be a pretty good game. Okay. 
We're going to down to six cards. I doubt Alpha Frog is playing a Time Twister effect. All right, Abram won his first round, so we're we're now down one two. Okay, recruiter's gone. Look at your last six cards. Does he have something? Oh, he has the Venser, sure. Is he going to skull clamp the recruiter? Probably not. And then Nahiri is either going to yeah just throw herself away to kill the angel. That makes sense. He has five cards in hand. Force negation, Venser, soul herder. All right, so. I guess I don't really want to draw a non-creature. Hmm. Ephemerate's kind of interesting. I guess I can Ephemerate now and force him to force of negation, but I feel like I'll get a chance to, to do some good Ephemerating some other time. Don't really think attack with the monk token accomplishes much. Clearly I'm on the like deck him plan at this point. The other thing is, I think there's a good chance he ends up tapping out of blue on my turn, or rather on his turn, and you can't pitch cast force of negation at that point. So, but we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. I guess one play could be Venser the Mesmeric Fiend so you can replay Consecrate Sphinx, but that doesn't even seem that impressive. Like, four cards left. How's he not just going to get decked here? I guess we'll find out. Um, cycle this. So I'll just leave this in hand. Pass the turn. Whoa, what is this? Holebreaker Horror? Ah, uh, sure. Okay. Man. My opponent's really come down to it. I mean, he doesn't have that many cards left in his deck, to be honest, but it's like... I took my eye off him for one second and Holebreaker Horror showed up? Like, it's not like he drew the whole rest of his deck. He still had a bunch of cards left. Okay. I'll see what, what goes on here, what transpires. Unfortunately, the Force of Negation blanks this Ephemerate. I really need him to tap down such that I get to use it. I don't think... Oh, he's going to evoke Revelark. Getting back Karmic Guide Mentor. Bouncing that. Um, okay. I don't really, I mean, I don't have another counter, is that right? Oh, I have Force of Will, but I can't cast it. Okay, given that, and I've used my Reprieve already, sure. Okay. What are we getting back here? Karmic Guide and Mentor, okay. Wow, and you Karmic by the Revel Arc? This is a sick little chain. All right, how do I let, make him draw cards? Um, do I have a way in my deck? No, okay. Okay, we're gonna block that. Guess we'll take one. And I guess we're going to ephemerate the Wall of Omens since he can't force of negation now because it's his turn. Draw. Okay. Untap. Ephemerate comes back. I still think I ephemerate the Wall of Omens here. See if he wants to force of negation. To stop me from drawing a card. Okay, he did not. I don't know what I can draw. Interesting. Orcish Bowmasters could do something here. So I can play Kaito Shizuki. That doesn't really do a whole lot. Bowmasters also, so he draws to two cards, gets an attack, draws to one card, gets an attack. So I don't think I'm going to get his last three cards as it turns out. Unless, I, is there something I can animate dead that will do it? I don't really know. All right. I can't get back the Ashiok in any way. I'm just looking to see if what I can do with like this Bowmasters or anything like that. I think I play this tapped and I think I do play the Kaito. 
because if he wants to force of negation it, I guess that's okay. All right, and I'm just gonna make a ninja and then pass the turn. Okay, Kaito phases out. Okay, so Karmic Guide's probably dying, is my guess. So can I survive three attacks from this board? Probably not. I don't think I'm very likely to. I have 14 cards left. Let's see, do I, what do I have left that's relevant? Oh, if I resolve a Parallax Wave. So I guess finding Parallax Wave and then being able to back it up with Force would be kind of good. More stuff. Not good. Okay, okay, okay. Hole breaker whore, huh? Thought I was doing pretty good until that thing showed up. I can give him back the Consecrated Sphinx. It's not really going to do a whole lot this game. Okay, it's just going to go attack now, huh? Uh, let's just go block, block. Take five, I guess. Okay, you get a Consecrated Sphinx back. Okay, I'm just going to play the Bowmasters. He's got Force Negation, Vencer, Soul Herder. I'll attempt to kill the Monk token. All right, I get my, get my Bowmaster kill in. Dark Sechores does nothing. All right, let's just draw with Kaito then. Okay, yeah, I'm basically dead now, I think. Because he gets to go like Vencer, bounce two things. I guess he can't bounce the Bowmasters, really, so it's mostly just bounce the token. Bouncing Wall of Wounds isn't like the most impressive. So let's go Vencer, he's going to Holebreaker Horror the Orc Army token. I think I force the Vencer. This forces him to use his Force of Negation if he wants to. We were an intense game. This is game one. <laughs> uh, okay. And he's going to bounce my Kaito? Okay, army gets bounced, Vencer resolves. He pitched the Soul Herder. So he has two cards in hand, I don't know what they are. Oh no, one's, one's a Consecrated Sphinx, sure. Bounce like a Godless Shrine. I guess this is probably what he's going to do here. He's going to bounce his own Skull Clamp. Sure, it's just a cheap spell to play. Got it. Okay. Well, it did get the Force of Negation out of his hand. Okay, so he's going to bounce Holebreaker Horde, a Talisman. I think I might be dead this turn, because he's going to get to... He is, let's see, 1, 8, 11, 15, 17, 19. Convincer. I guess he can't bounce the Bowmasters. Right, so what happens if I block the Holebreaker Horror with the Bowmaster? I mean, I don't really think I can survive another turn. Which is this one? It's ten. No, that's enough. All right. 
Crazy game. I guess if I had Ashiok tomorrow, that would have just been better. It didn't seem right at the time. I don't even think I'm going to sideboard is probably... I mean, there's Repeal. Repeal didn't seem that great. Brutality seemed okay. Bowmasters is great against him. Yeah, I mean... I don't know. Things were going well that game until he drew that treachery. That's where the, the, the worm started to turn. <sighs> I guess instead of putting Resto in, I just plussed Ashiok aggressively. Maybe that would have just been better. It seemed like Ashiok was... Because he had a mentor out at the time. It seemed like Ashiok was going to get attacked down pretty quickly. And it didn't seem like I was going to get to outrace on the decking front. But actually, it might have been good to do that. All right, well, hopefully this time I uh, draw Moxes and he doesn't draw his Ancestral. That sounds like a good plan to me. I mean, there is Elish Norn, but that card's really expensive. Doesn't feel like that's what I want here. Uh, yeah. Repeal can hit a token. That's not that good. He's got Skull Clamp, but I can't do much about that. I mean, I guess I could side an Embreath Shield Breaker off of Raugren Triumph. That doesn't sound ideal to me. All right. I'd like to play first. Oh, okay. This hand's pretty nice. Let's go land. Preordain. Hmm. Definitely bottoming the Mesmeric Fiend. Honestly, I think I'm just going to bottom the Force of Will here. Yeah, because I wanted to land. Land go. I could Temporal Mastery turn two, thanks to Brainstorm, but I actually think I want to wait. I'm just going to get a scrub land with this as my plan. And hope he doesn't have a... No, I guess this can also get scrub. All right, I really hope that Frogarino doesn't have Force of Negation here. If I can land this Ashiok, I think I'll be in great shape. Do you have Ancestral? Yeah. Okay, didn't have Force of Negation, very nice. I hit Mana Leak and I hit Resto, okay. I mean, now he has 10 cards in hand, unless he has a Mox or something, which I don't think he's got in his deck. He's probably going to have to do some discarding. Oh, he's just got the discard too. Yeah, that is not that impressive. Discard Consecrate Sphinx and Chain Lightning. Um, let's go to the Shrine and let's go Vindicate on your island, I think. Hopefully no uh, no counter. The mana leak's already gone. Guess you could have force negation. Is he thinking about playing a snapcaster here? I think I'm just gonna plus the Ashiok again. Okay, well he doesn't have an easy decision here. He's got a hard one. Well, I don't mind that. Okay, plus on you. Pass the turn. Hit Treachery, Skull Clamp, and Sacred Foundry. Sure. Because now I think I'm going to get to really go deep. Because now, oh, let's put back Parallax Wave, Temporal Mastery, Untap and Miracle Temporal Mastery. That's going to be good. With an Ashiok in play, that is really nice. And I have a Daze ready to go. Though I guess Daze doesn't stop Force of Negation here. And I'm going to get to collect a Brutality him. Here I'm going to shuffle away the Parallax Wave. We're not at that stage in the game. And, uh, all right. I don't think I want Murktide. I mean, I mean, Murktide's a cheap big creature, but it feels like it's just, I don't know, I don't know. By the time you get Murktide out, it feels like there's a lot of answers to it. I think I'm just good to go. All right, well, I drew a mox that game. He did draw the Ancestral still. He's two for two on having Ancestral, but 
let's see, this is going to be the game where he doesn't have the Ancestral, and I'm still going to have the Mox. In fact, I'm going to turn one Ashiok. Big talk. <laughs> no, but this is a good hand. He's mulliganing. This is turn one Reprieve, turn two Trinket Mage. If I can find my Brainstorm, I'll get a chance to fire off that Temporal Mastery. Oh, there's the Mox. Okay. Look at me. Look at me rolling out like this. Get him my Sensei's Divining Top. That was sick. That's a sick opener. If he doesn't have a play this turn, I'm really liking where I'm at. Oh, yeah. We, we have the initiative. Not the literal initiative in the you know busted sense, but <laughs> we have the initiative. So here I don't think I play my fetch yet. Because here there's a decent chance I go reprieve your play and then spin top. So if I play fetch, I'm kind of wasting a shuffle. I don't want to do that. I want to just do it the... We save that to shuffle later. Also, I'm, I might just cast Temporal Mastery this game, given that I started with two moxes. Soul Herder? Sure. Okay. Um. I think I I think I just play Lingering Souls here. And then play my fetch because my animate dead and if if this was the kind of counter that could put a spell in the graveyard, I would think differently. But given that it's it's not, I think I would rather just shuffle away animate dead and marsh flats. I know shuffling away a, a fetch land can be a little dicey, but I've got a lot of action in my deck. I feel like I'm not gonna necessarily sit around and do that. All right, so I'm playing this. And then Lingering Souls and pass with Reprieve up. Nope, this is not what I want. I want to put my graveyard here so Lingering Souls stops bothering me. Okay, so he's got like a Resto maybe. That's fine. If he wants to Resto, he can. Collect Brutality, Animate Dead. Uh, interesting. Okay. Collective Brutality. I'm considering playing the Brutality. I'm just deciding what I want to discard here, if anything. I don't even know what mode I want to do. It's actually tough. Let's... I guess I'm reprieving the Resto no matter what, so let's just attack first. So here's a question. If he plays the Resto, my top two cards are Animate Dead and Marsh Flats. I think I'm just gonna crack this. I don't think I need our black. Let's just get a Plains. Reprieve. Okay. Now I know that I can discard Right. Okay. Consecrated Sphinx that he can't cast. Chain Lightning Path to Exile. Uh, let's take the Chain Lightning, I guess. It's got Resto in hand. Do I want to make Lingering Souls? Or do I want to spin the top? His hand is... Restoration Angel, Consecrated Sphinx, Chain Lightning. I think I'd rather spin the top because the resto is already going to make my life difficult. Don't draw blue. Don't draw blue, by the way. I don't want you to draw lands or good spells. That's all. Really easy to request. Uh, resto already means it's not like I'm going to get my beatdowns on here. So I think I'd rather spin the top and then maybe find something good. I think I like Ashiok a good amount.
So I think I'm gonna take a slightly different tack here. Ashiok. I could keep Force of Will on top, but I think just doing Ashiok there, hit Bone Crusher and Exiled Manalik and Skull Clamp. I think I wanna wait I'm not triple blocking the resto anyway, so I think I just want to wait. I don't need to force of will the resto. Kind of want to save that for the Consecrated Sphinx, and he's going to play resto now, and that's going to be fine. And then I'm going to... So he's June Island now. Oh, whoa, what is this last card? Is it a Talisman? Okay, he's going to attack Ashiok. I think I'm just gonna let that happen. Yes, Talisman says two cards are passed. So I know it's two cards. All right, so let's spin the top. Rogan Triumph. Oh, Thoughtseize. Thoughtseize kind of does the trick, doesn't it? And I don't need the Force of Will. But having him tap out for the Force of Will is pretty nice. I kind of wanna. Yeah, let's go. All right, this is this is. Let's just draw Force of Will. Yeah, this is going to be a close one, but I think this is why I love cards that let me look at my opponent's hand. I think I'm going to get to set this up in the way I want. Ashiaku hit a Venser, exiled fourth year Lingus and Nahiri. Attack for four. Let's see if he passes the trinket mage. He probably is not going to, is my guess. And then pass the turn. Because then Ashia gets attacked down to one. Fine with that. And he's probably going to tap out for Consecrated Sphinx here, because like if he doesn't, what is he doing? He's just doing nothing. The disaster scenario from my perspective is if he doesn't play Consecrated Sphinx because he drew Force of Negation like exactly, especially since Mana Leak is also gone. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to crack the Prismatic Vista. I guess I get Swamp is fine. Spin. Just want an untapped land. All right, fine, we didn't get one, that, that's okay, that's okay. Draw. Mold Drifter, draw those other two. Plus Ashiok on you. This is gone. I'm just gonna attack for four. Like. If he paths the Mold Drifter and attacks Ashiok with Resto, then I'm threatening lethal here. That works for me. I also have this Temporal Mastery. I just kept wanting to draw a land to cast it. <laughs> we didn't quite get there. All right, what is this? What is this? Monastery Mentor. Okay. No, no plays. Sure. Spin the top. His last card's path. I mean, I'm still going to win this game. Methinks. Um, don't want to shuffle all those away. Because next turn I'm, I can cast Temporal Mastery. It's kind of tempting to cast Temporal Mastery when, like... But... No, no. I actually should still wait a turn on the Mastery, I think. As odd as that sounds. All right, so let's draw. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast... Uh, Parallax wave. So first, let's just plus two Ashiok on you. Parallax wave. And that is basically going to do it. Yep. Oof. All right. One and one. Close match. And uh, it's going to be a close draft. On to round three. All righty. Time for round three. So I'm one and one. So Otto is 0 and 2. And... Abram is currently 1-0 and in game three. So that leaves us two to three. All right, I'm on the play against one Tom Martell Esquire. 
this is a good hand. Obviously, if I had a mox, this hand would be absurd. But I just drew two moxes for the turn one uh, last game, so I guess I can't really complain. Boom, boom. Let's lead on Swamp. No reason to get wastelanded. Tom's playing like some kind of like Jund lands sort of deal or, or uh, obs on lands or something. Okay, well, well, we'll find out. Or four color lands, whatever. He's got lands in his deck. <laughs> like the land, various land combos. Mesmeric Feed into Planeswalker on the play is pretty good. So what do we got? Knight's Whisper, Knight of the Reliquary, Forest, Forest, and a bunch of expensive cards. Okay. Okay. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, we take the Knight's Whisper. I mean, he would have to he wouldn't even have to discard because I'd be taking a card if I took something else. And I just hope he doesn't draw white for that Knight of the Reliquary on three, I suppose. And Ragrin Triumph. I think I just Kaito here. I think Kaito drawing cards is better than Ashiok. Mm, and draw a card. Because what I want to find is a uh, Reprieve or a Mox or a Vindicate would be amazing. Don't play white. Okay, that's not a white. That is not a white mana. We love to see it. I need to draw not lands though. All right, I get an attack in, so my Kaito draws me an extra card. Mox or a spell. Fine with either. Yeah, I lied. That wasn't a good spell. It's okay. Let's go Ashiok. Plus two. Milling. Mox Ruby. That was a nice mill. And then I'm, I don't think I'm going to cycle this game, so I'll just play that. And then next turn I can go Trinket Mage for a Mox and then play another three drop. No white land, no white land. One more turn of fading, it would be really nice. Okay. So I faded the white land there, but... Oh, Grim Monolith. Okay. Okay. So he gets to Nyssa now. I really need to find Vindicate or Reprieve. Thoughtseize would be pretty good too. Because next turn, I'm getting Mind Slavered, right? Two, four, six, eight off of the Nissa. So if he has another Forest, I'm getting Mind Slavered. If he doesn't, he gets to Prime Time. And I've got a little bit of small ball going here. All right, can we just draw something good? That doesn't seem like it's too much to ask for, does it? Grim Monolith, huh? Well done, Tom. Okay. Vindicate would still really get me out of this. That's plus two Ashiok on you. Shriek Maw and Elf. Damnation, all right. Draw a card. I guess that's something. Um, Trinket Mage, I think just getting a Mox is still good here. And then draw step, we're, we're V-clicking. All right. All right. Let's see what you got. It also means you can't really attack with Nyssa. Sand is Bayou Mindslaver, a Knight of the Reliquary. I mean, I guess I just have to take Mindslaver, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, Nissa's nine, ten. All right. Yeah. Take Mind Slaver. Leaving him with. Swamp, Bayou, Knight of the Reliquary, Prime Time. But this uh, Ashiok is going to get to put a Shriek Mon to play next turn, most likely. Unfortunately, hidden, didn't hit the Depths combo. So we'll see. Oh man, Abram lost. So we're down 2 4. Time to 3 0. Best I can do is a 2 1. That's what I'm going to try to do. So let's say he didn't draw anything relevant. He can play Primeval Titan. He can.
can play both prime time and another rel reliquary this turn by prime timing for a white source. But then I get to shriek maul the prime time and who knows, attack some combination of him and Nyssa. Oh, he's not doing it that way. So where did he draw? That would make that the right play. Man, except for this Vendillion Click, I have not drawn anything this game. I need to find Temporal Mastery. That would be awesome. Okay, so, so his hands, Knight of the Reliquary Swamp. So yeah, he got the stage combo. At least Lingering Souls is pretty good against that. All right, what is this? Dothy Voidwalker? Ugh. Can my opponents just chill just like a little bit, like a tiny bit? They just have no chill whatsoever. Because now I can't even linger in souls. He should definitely attack here. Because with the Void Walker out, if I block with V-click, that's actually great for him. Okay. Well, I don't really want Kaito to die, so. Okay. And my I was really hoping Ashiok would snipe part of the Depths combo. Oh, Ephemerate is interesting. Okay, so let's... Owner's Control. So it doesn't work with Shriekma, unfortunately. Let's attack Nyssa. Dothy Voidwalker. Uh, I was really counting on that Lingering Souls to do some good anti-Merit Lodge work. Because this makes a 20-20, but, you know, Lingering Souls would do a good job blocking it. Mm-hmm. Also, he drew the Grim Monolith? Come on. Come on. All right. If I draw a Time Walk here with Kaito, that would be amazing. What would another good draw be? Come on, Tom. You don't have any plays here. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. It's not too late for me to start drawing well. Oh. That, that actually was an insane draw. Never mind. I get to top deck too. Booyah. Uh, let's go ahead. Put a, a Shrikama into play. Shrikama, your prime time. One, two, three, four, six, seven mana. Land. Parallax wave. I'm just gonna wave the Dothy Voidwalker right now because I'm gonna want to end up doing that, and then play Lingering Souls. Um, do I want to wave? The question is, do I want to wave any of those forests? One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Basically, is it worth waving the forests at all? Any of them? All of them? Yeah, I think so. Do I want to wave another one? Is actually the real question. Because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Untap that Eden. So he has enough to mind slaver me if he has mind slaver. Yeah, I'm just going to do that. I feel like letting him top deck Mind Slaver is not great for me, and him getting those forests back doesn't matter too much. Mm -hmm. I still have an answer to Dark Depths here. This ticks down to two. I attack. This ticks down to one. I attack again. I think just getting all... The, his creatures off the board is good, and if he wants to toss his bio at, Bayou at me, I guess I can block with Shriek Maw. He also had to get Depth Staged, you know, for the combo, so he doesn't have white for Knight of the Reliquary. Mm -hmm. Played the Swamp. Okay, or no, played a Forest, actually. Sorry, his Swamp, Knight of the Reliquary in hand. All right, I don't, I don't want to look at you anymore. Guess you might as well attack here. It's my guess because otherwise, uh, 
The Shriek Maw has fear. It can only be blocked by artifact or black creatures. With this is neither. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine just trading here. Because also, I don't really... It's not. This isn't one of the, the, the Sandy Dog situation where the Parallax way of coming back is a huge problem or anything. Like, he's going to get two forests and a Dothy Voidwalker back. I mostly wanted the Dothy Voidwalker off the board so that I could uh, put Lingering Souls just into the graveyard. Okay, draw. This fades. Brutality doesn't do much. Um, let's... Plus two, I don't really want an elf. Beside you and Minsk and Boo. Ooh, hitting that beside you is nice. Oh, and an Inferno Titan. Okay. Attack Nissa, attack Nissa, attack Nissa. Attack you, I guess. If he makes a Marilage token, I can just kill it with the Parallax Wave. So he's going to kind of want to wait. And then let's draw. Mm, let's Lingering Souls. Godless Shrine. I don't think Ephemerating here is that impressive. Like, he can play the Knight if he wants. Don't really care. What are we turning this into? Oh, Raugrin Tri, I'm sure. Played the Swamp, and then now it's going to play the Knight. Sure, sure, sure. All right, draw. Fades down to one. So his stage is tapped though, so I can't, he can't currently use it. Um, let's send. I'm at 20, yeah. And then plus Ashiok. All right, I mean, I think we're gonna win this game. Hit him, Maelstrom Pulse. Oh, the Mind Slayer was not great. Did you know that Kaido technically has an ultimate? <laughs> um, I guess I'll vindicate the Raugrin Trium, the Thespian stage here. And play a land. I guess the Knight's going to get to attack for four. Sure. I could draw step Vendillion Click as well. We didn't even have that much mana, so I think I'm okay and his damnation is gone. Kind of think we're okay here. Okay. Uh, Merit Lodge Lance combo. Oh, 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 repeal's coming in. <laughs> oh, that is nice. Uh, they haven't seen that one yet either. Collective Brutality looks pretty bad. He just doesn't have very many sorceries, and his creatures aren't big or aren't small. I might want Murktide also. I mean, Parallax Wave is great. I, I'm really happy with where I, how high I took Parallax Wave. That card is very good. Uh, yeah. I mean, the Bowmasters isn't, like, the best, but I, it's fine. In response to Night's Whisper, ba-boom. Do I want Embereth Shieldbreaker? Kills Grim Monolith. Mox Ruby. Would it be a splash? No. Nah. I, I, I never got to grief ephemerate anyone. I would like to do that. Can Tom be my victim here? <laughs> Let's find out. I am on the draw. I think it's gonna I think what this draft is gonna come down to is that I did not beat Sandy Dog. <laughs> Cause Salvado's O2. If he pulls his last one out, I think Abram is not gonna get the three out. I mean, we know he's not gonna get the throw. He's one one, so we we're down two four. One 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 oh two. I think I'm gonna win this one because I'm up a game and my deck's great. Uh, of course, I always think my deck's great and I deserve the three out. That's not true. When my deck's bad, I say it, but they just haven't been that bad. I feel like I don't know. I feel like I do a pretty good job drafting them. I like this hand. It's mulliganing, and I have turn one mesmeric fiend. I have that temporal mastery just chilling in hand. This card has been okay, not great terrible like hard casting it has been a decent potential and then uh i feel like 
setting it up with brainstorms pretty nice. Oh, vindicate's nice. All right. Let's go, Mesmeric Fiend. Nissa, Beaumont Courier. What the hell? Uh, Grim Monolith. Yeah, I guess I take Grim Monolith there. Because he's got two big things to play, so I should clearly just take the Man Accelerant that lets him play both. Uh, Beaumont and Forest got played, sure. Yeah, I'll take one. If I draw a black source or a white source, I can vindicate a land here. Mox is funny because it doesn't actually do anything. I guess I'll play it, but let's just go Lingering Souls. There's, there's just no real reason to Bowmaster the Beaumont. Like, it's not doing anything. So, I would like... I guess if I draw a black or white source, I can Vindicate a land. If I draw a spell, I can cast basically everything. I guess I can't cast Grief. Okay, Swamp. Got a bit of a clock here. Oh, that does help. Mm. Let's attack with these two. Pass the turn, I think. I think passing the turn here is good because I still get to Bowmasters, the Beaumont. Bow, bow, bow. And if you play something I want to reprieve, I'll get to do that instead of tapping out. Mm. Seems fine. Also, if he ever misses a land drop, it's pretty bad for him. Oh. I see. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I can't stop that from happening. Well, Reprieve is pretty good against Grim Monolith. I will say that. Because he taps out for a big spell. Also, he's got no double green here. His uh, two cards are double green, and he has four lands, only one of which is green. So I guess I know what I'm vindicating. All right. Let's go Bowmasters. Beaumont Masters. No, the courier. Now there's an exiled card that neither of us will know what it is. Draw. Oh, interesting. Um, let's just send. Let's pass the turn. I don't really think there's anything I can do here. If he draws a green source. Oh, man. That's actually pretty annoying. Whew. Okay. Wasteland is pretty good there. Uh, let's repeal your Grim Monolith, I guess. I need to draw a white. Oh, uh, okay. Honestly, not as good as just drawing white mana, but Force of Will is nice at countering the first thing he does. Well, first of the big spells he plays, I guess. So he's going to play a prime time. I'm going to force it. All right. I need to draw white. And yeah, that's mostly what it comes down to. Grief would also potentially do it. It's not like I just lose because I also have another turn or two because I can just vindicate once it gets cast. Oh, I forgot to flashback Lingering Souls. That could be bad. Because then I would attack him down to two. Well, I'm still probably going to win, but that was just clearly a mistake. Uh, I mean, Tom's just deciding which of these to play, obviously. We'll see what uh, whichever one he plays I'm going to force. But yeah, I should have flashed back Lingering Souls. I think this is not even going to save him at this point. Hmm. Now he's at five. 
Yeah, I think he just dies if he plays Nessa. <laughs> or primetime. I have six 1-1s one and he's at five. <laughs> Don't draw damnation. Oh, him. Him to Turok. Getting Vindicate Ashiok and... That'll do it. All right. Well, I got the 2-1. Uh, Abram's winning his first game and Salvato's down a game, so... We'll see what ends up happening. I'll, of course, bring a come back in for a quick update and an outro. And, uh, yeah, 2 one solid with this deck. Like, I thought that I was ahead against Sandy in both the games I lost, but that's that's cube for you. And uh, his, his deck was good, and he played some good cards. I was impressed with Parallax Wave for sure, and Ephemerate was really good uh, in theory, but I just didn't actually play it. So I'm kind of disappointed. I feel like I didn't get to do the Ephemerate thing. Because I ephemerated like a Wall of Omens and like a Mesmeric Fiend. Never got to ephemerate Grief or Moldrifter. Never really drew Grief, honestly. But I still like these low to the ground Esper decks. Like you saw Vindicate, Daze, Thoughtseize, Reprieve. Good mana with all these fetches. Bowmasters, Baleful Strix, Vendillion Click. Lingering Soul is a high pick. I really like that card. Yeah, this is a fun deck. Little cheap three mana Planeswalkers to to utilize with the moxes and then the cheap creatures and, and all that stuff. So a solid 2-1, and uh, we'll see if my team can take it down. All right, I don't have the update I was hoping for. I got the 2-1, and it turned out I really needed to beat Sandy and get the 3-0 because uh, Abram went 2-1, and if you can do the math, Luis Salvato went 0-3, leaving my team at 4-5, and five, so we lost the draft. Unfortunate, but... I kind of have two aims and two things I care about going into the drafts. Uh, the first one, and this is what kind of guides my decisions, is maximizing my team's equity by trying to not only get the best deck and record I can, but also hate draft when appropriate, try to hook the person to my left and cut them off. Like Tom did, in fact, take the Vampiric Tutor, by the way, I knew he would. Uh, and by doing so, give my team the best chance to win. But aside from whether my team actually does win... I like to challenge myself to, you know, do the best I can. So if I 3-0 and my team loses, I feel like I did my best. You know, I got a 3-0 and hopefully sabotage the deck of the person I'm passing to. The fact that my team lost, well, that's unfortunate. But the main reason I play these is because they're fun and they're challenging. So me 2-1-ing here, well, I could have 3-0'd. I don't really have any cause to complain because I could have always done better. It's actually the rule. Uh, not like a rule rule, but... You know, the other day, uh, one of the guys was complaining. He's like, I went 2-1 and I had to, you know, or my team had to lose. And like, you know, I'm, uh, that's unfortunate. Like, he's like, oh, man, that sucks. I, I, hate, it. I hate losing when I go 2-1. And I'm like, oh, no, no, you you don't understand. If you go 3-0, you get to complain about your team losing. But if you go 2-1, well, why didn't you go 3-0? Your team might have won if you went 3-0. So the 3-0s get to complain. And then, uh, the you know, the 0-3s get to kind of uh, suck it up and get ready for the next one. But... End of the day, these drafts are always close. It was 5-4. to four. It would have been 4-5 to five in the other direction if uh, we had pulled out one more match because we've got a group of really dedicated, strong cubers, so all the teams end up being pretty equal. In any case, that was this draft. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I appreciate you hanging out with me and getting some cube drafts in. Uh, this deck was pretty fun. The, the two moxes, of course, didn't hurt. And uh, I look forward to the next one because there will be plenty more. As always, i uh, got a new draft up every day, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.